Using LT Spice to simulate a circuit can be very helpful, but you also have to keep an eye on it so you know what you're seeing and if it makes sense. For example, if we have this simple op-amp circuit here, we're going to simulate it with a test sine wave. We're going to power it from a 5 volt single supply, unity gain, so two resistors are the same, arbitrary load resistor 1 meg, just in case we wanted to simulate putting a different load on there, drawing more current, and being single supply, we're going to bias it up with 2.5 volts, so any signal we put in is going to be centered around 2.5 volts and it can swing positive and negative without clipping. So we need to put an op amp in here to complete the circuit. We click on this component tool and go into op amps, and there's a whole bunch of analog devices, or LT, being LT Spice, but we're going to choose Universal Op Amp because we're not looking for any of these specific characteristics. We drop that in, and now we can run a simulation, put a probe to get plots, input, output. I like to change the colors to minimize the one that I am using just as a reference, which is the input. The one I really care about is the output, so I make that one stand out more. So this ideal op amp is behaving as expected. It's inverting, so the input signal is coming out with a gain of 1, but it's inverted, and we're going rail to rail, 0 to 5 volts. But if I plan to use a specific op amp like LM358, especially with only a limited supply voltage, not much headroom, I want to make sure that this is what I'm going to get if this is what I'm expecting. And there's no LM358 that I can see in those default parts, so there's a couple of ways to go about simulating with an external op-amp model. The first step is to find one online, including manufacturer websites, or you can just find them. There's various forums and groups. But if we just go to TI, go to the LM358 page, and we can find design tools and simulation, and we can get a SPICE model. So this is a zip file. We download it, we extract it. And for anything like that, where I'm not using the built-in libraries, in case I need to send this to someone else, and they're not going to have anything I install in LT Spice, I just keep any downloaded models in the project folder itself, and then I can just send the whole folder and people will have everything. So what I'm going to do is go to File, Open, and go to the folder, change this so I can see all files. I downloaded two LM358 libraries. This one here is a National Semiconductor, and this one here is the TI one. It doesn't matter which one. I don't know how they both differ, but the main thing to note for now is the file name of each. So if I go with this one from TI, it's in my project folder with this circuit. So I'm just going to copy this file name, get back out of here. That's all I wanted to do by going File, Open, and browsing to this folder. Now, if I want to change this ideal op amp into a 358, I go here and add this spice directive, and I can say .inc or .include or .lib for library, and the name of the exact file. It will search in various places for it, including this project folder, and it will find it. So if I say OK, place that somewhere here. Now I've basically included this sub-circuit. So what I can do now, if I right-click here, get back to this directive I just put in, if I say Open, it opens up that file, and here I can see the exact specific name of the sub-circuit for this op-amp, and then here's all the pins. There's the inverting and non-inverting inputs, power supply ground, and the op amps output. So I need to just copy the specific name of this sub-circuit. Now I can close this. And if I right-click on the op amp here to get the properties, change this value, and put in that sub-circuit name. Now it's going to look for that circuit in that library to use as an op amp model. So I'm going to run it, and we'll see the difference here. But first, here is something that happens. I'm not sure exactly why this happens. There's a port and pin count mismatch between this symbol and the actual model in here. But googling it, I found a workaround. So we right-click again, get into here, open the file. Apparently, this here, it works well when it has an extra pin. And we can call it whatever we want. So call it dummy, because it's stupid and then save this, close it, now try to simulate. Now we can see the point here. Since we're intending to use an LM358, and now we're simulating with one, 
we can see that if we try to run this and we're expecting to see 5 volts out on the sine wave, we're going to be clipping maybe 3.8, maybe 3.6 volts. So that's where it comes in useful to actually simulate for what you're going to use. And that's one way you can go about getting the simulation file incorporated. There's different ways to do it. I just prefer to do it this way. But I will show another way because this works well when there's already a circuit symbol. Let's say I was using a different type of IC that I have a model for, but there's no schematic symbol. So I have the same schematic here. I just made a little more room here. In this case, let's say we don't have an op-amp symbol. We just downloaded one of those SPICE models for the op-amp. What we can do, go to File, Open, and then All Files so we can see everything. Again, let's say that's the SPICE model, so we open. Now, the name of the actual sub-circuit, if we right-click on that, we can say Create Symbol and say Yes. And there's a generic ugly symbol. <laughs> it's got our dummy pin. Let's actually get rid of that. We're not going to need it now because we're making our own symbol. Now it's got this generic ugly looking op amp with all of our pins and I actually want to move these around. I want this non-inverting on the bottom, inverting on the top. If I wanted to, I could actually change the names. So if I right click on it, I'll just call that minus plus VCC is okay, VSS and out. Okay, so if I save and close, and I can close this model file, save it if necessary. Now all I need to do, go here to place component. Now there's this auto-generated component folder, and it's got the one we just made automatically. If I take that and drop it in here, so after changing some settings, I had messed up the signal source here and some other part values, but Here's the custom component we just auto-generated with the specific LM358 model, and it's functioning the same with the clipping output to represent what would most likely happen with the real chip. So that's useful to have this kind of auto-generated part. If, say, this is a 10-pin weird IC, and you just want to get it into the circuit and get it up and running. But for the op-amps, it's easier just to use the built-in symbols and do it the other way, probably. Either way, we're using the same models we downloaded from the internet, and we're getting better results. So little things like that help make the tool useful. It can only do what we tell it, and we can only expect so much out of it. So as long as everything is making sense, it's a great tool to use when circuit designing or testing.